It's happened five times before, an Electoral College winner losing the popular vote. John Quincy Adams over Andrew Jackson, Rutherford B. Hayes over Samuel Tilden, Benjamin Harrison over Grover Cleveland, George W. Bush over Al Gore, and Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton, who won the popular vote by nearly a three million vote margin. Oh, but it's not the popular vote. Uh, that wins you the election. Because as Cal Gilson teaches in his Politics 101 class at SMU, the framers of the Constitution wanted to make sure each state had a representative voice. Texas' number of U.S. representatives plus its two senators make up its 38 electoral votes. A candidate wins Texas, he or she gets all of those votes. That way, the greater populations of the biggest states like Florida, New York, or California don't get to decide for everybody else. I think that there are enough states that benefit by the Electoral College that it'll be hard to get it uh, replaced by a direct popular vote. Dodgers have won it all! Others liken it to a World Series. The Dodgers didn't win in Arlington because they had the most combined runs. They won because they were the first to win four electoral games. But there are 51 simultaneous games, which is then about representing the people through their states. And the change to a national popular vote instead requires a constitutional amendment approved by a majority of states. Cal Gilson doubts that will ever happen. Uh, no longer relevant device. And we should get rid of it if we could. We can't, so we're stuck with it. A system potentially in play again. In Dallas, I'm Kevin Reese.